Hi guys. Hi baby. Hi babies. Hmm. Do all of you know what's coming up soon? Oh, what's happening? We will be holding a live webinar on writing well for secondary school, where we will share with Sec One and Two students useful tips on how they can improve their essay writing. I believe many lower secondary students struggle with the transition from writing primary English compositions to writing secondary level essays. What are some problems faced by your Sec One and Two students? Well, one of the most common questions is this. Is there a difference between how I write in primary school and how I should write in secondary school? Hmm, I guess the most effective way to show the difference is in how students write narratives. Yes, exactly. In primary school, compositions are written to pique the interest of readers. What they should do to create an exciting climax or even add a twist. At the secondary level, students need to demonstrate all these two, but include reflection and thoughtfulness. You've raised a good point about including reflections, Coleman. But how can our students go about doing that? To put it simply, our students need to develop more in-depth thinking in their essays. They must show understanding of the theme given. This means, even in the introduction, they must explain keywords. Now, perhaps you can give us an example. Sure. For example, in our regular English class, we had this question: Write about a time you regretted an action. What did you learn from the experience? So first, the teacher alerts the students to focus on the idea of regret. Then, students are guided through the process to transform a PSLE style narrative composition into a secondary personal reflective recount. I see. Therefore, they really should be signing up for our upcoming webinar to learn more about developing the skill of writing reflections. That's true. Another problem that lower secondary students often grapple with is writing argumentative essays. The main purpose in an argumentative essay is to present a point of view by making a stand. Use logical evidence to support and explain it, and in the process, persuade the reader that the argument is valid. Hmm, yes. Imagine if someone reads an essay with no clear stand. Wouldn't it defeat the purpose of making an argument in the first place? Precisely. So, for an argumentative essay to work, readers must be able to identify the writer's point of view before they can be persuaded that the points are indeed convincing. This is only possible if the writer makes a clear stand. So, Amelia, what does making a clear stand mean? Should students just state "Yes, I agree" or "Strongly disagree"? Unfortunately, Coleman. This is what many students tend to do, and they simply paraphrase the question. Making a stand means stating a point of view clearly, logically, and convincingly. Students should actually do this first before explaining why they have taken a certain position. And also at the start of the year, students have asked me, "Must all essays have an introduction?" Well, I would tell them that writing without an introduction is like barging into a room and rambling on. It shows that you do not care about the people in the room and whether they are interested in what you want to say. Ah, an introduction is a must. Yes, an effective introduction helps readers decide if an essay is of interest to them, tells readers how the writer relates to a topic. And gives readers a clear idea of what to expect in the rest of the essay. Yes, yes, I totally agree with Mavis here about the importance of an effective introduction. Now, to add to that, the expectations for the use of vocabulary and language at the secondary level is of course much higher. Let me show you an example. 
a primary school pupil, may write, It was raining cats and dogs. I felt as cold as ice and I felt very down. At the secondary level, students will need to elevate it and use figurative language such as the storm outside mirrors the coldness and sadness I feel in my heart. It all looks so very simple, but it requires practice and nurturing. That is what we would teach in our classes. Students also seem to be worried about meeting the minimum word count of 350 words. What do all of you think? I would usually tell them not to worry. 350 words is approximately just two sides of a full sketch sheet. It is a practical approach that spares them from the tedious task of counting words. Oh wow! This webinar is certainly worth attending. I must tell my students about it. Where can I get the details? Yes, they should sign up for it. Let me share the details of this webinar. 